Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean mystery thriller movie released in 2012, called, Helpless. A man searches for his fiancée, who vanished without a trace one month before their wedding. Along the way, he discovers shocking, dark, twisted truths about her. Can he handle the truth? The year is 2009. Veterinarian Moon Ho and his fiancé, Soon Young, are on the way to Moon Ho's parents in Anong, a city southeast of Seoul. They look happy as they are about to visit Moon Ho's parents to give them a wedding invitation and get their blessing. Yep, they will be married in a month. They stop at the motorway rest area to get coffee and some snacks. Soon Young answers a call from her phone as Moon Ho gets out of the car under some heavy rain. However, when Moon Ho returns to the car, his fiancée disappears. In a panic, he tries to look for her, makes an announcement on the PA speaker, calls her phone, but he still can't find her. A friend calls him, but he is still in panic and can't talk to him right now. He continues his search in the nearby toilet and finds Soon Young's hairpin on the floor. What happened to her? Could it be that some weirdo kidnapped her? He goes straight to the police to make a report. But the police say that it is pretty common for brides to run away just before their marriage because they feel anxious. Moon Ho insists that it is not something like that. The car engine was still running, her hairpin fell out on the toilet floor, and she looked excited for the wedding day. Moon Ho becomes frustrated as he can only wait for any development from the police, but they don't consider this an emergency. On the way back home, he tells his parents that they can't make it there, but he lies about the reason. To his surprise, he finds her flat is in a mess as if there has been a break-in. Suddenly, his friend calls again and insists that he has something important to tell, so they meet up at Moon Ho's veterinary clinic. His friend is a banker. Moon Ho and Soon Young came to him last week to apply for a new bank account and credit card for Soon Young. But his friend recently found out that she filed for bankruptcy due to credit card debt in 2007. Then his banker friend calls her to ask about it when she gets a call while Moon Ho is away to get coffee and some snacks at the rest area. Moon Young seemed surprised about it and ended the call immediately before rushing out of the car. Moon Ho is a bit mad because his friend is supposed to call him instead of her. He also believes that the bank made some mistakes, but his friend shows him the exemption letter sent to the creditors. Back at home, he tries to make sense of the situation while looking at their pre-wedding picture and remembering their happy days. Where could she go? And why did she hide about her bankruptcy? On the next day, he goes to Soon Young's workplace. But she is not there, and her co-worker also can't contact her. Moon Ho becomes curious about his fiancé's past, so he asks if he can get her resume when she applies for work there. As he waits, he observes Soon Young. After he gets the resume, he does a little background check on it. It turns out that all of her past job experience mentioned on the resume is a lie. Either the company doesn't exist, or she wasn't registered there. What the hell is this? Why does she apply for the job with a fake resume? His friend, who is also an employee at his clinic, helps him track her down. Although the job experience on the resume is fake, the education history is real, and they manage to contact her high school and get her hometown address. Moon Ho hasn't been there yet because Soon Young doesn't have any family left since her mother died not long before she met him. He decides to investigate her debt history first, so he goes to the person who was in charge of her case. The last time she visited him was two years ago when she inquired about her mother's life insurance. But Moon Ho realizes something strange when reading Soon Young's handwritten statement. The handwriting is entirely different from the resume. When they check the data further, they find out that the picture from the bankruptcy file and the resume shows two completely different people. But all other data, such as resident registration numbers, are identical. Whoa! Red flag! Does his fiancé use someone else's identity illegally? Then, who the hell does his fiancé really is? He goes back to his clinic and discusses the situation with his friends. Moon Ho still wants to find his fiancé first. But they don't know how to find her. They don't even know her real name. Moon Ho doesn't have any other choice than to look for the real Soon Young. Maybe if they find her, they can understand how his fiancé stole her identity. 
but more importantly, to find out his fiancée's real identity. On the next day, Moon Ho goes to his fiancée's workplace again to pick up all of her stuff. When he gets back to his clinic, he meets with his regular customer, Hodu, and his mom. It's been a while since they visited the clinic because Hodu's mom moved away from Seoul to the countryside to enjoy her life alone there with her dogs. Moon Ho greets them briefly then goes inside to look for clues from his fiancée's stuff. But he still can't find any clue, and realizes that he needs professional help. After finishing his work at the clinic, he goes to his cousin, Kim. He is a former police detective who got sacked for taking bribes. Despite that, he is a brilliant detective back in his task force. Moon Ho explains the whole situation and begs him to help find the real Soon Young so he can track his fiancée down. At first, Kim isn't interested in helping him, but Moon Ho keeps begging him, so Kim agrees to help. On the next day, he starts his investigation at Moon Ho's fiancé's flat. Examining her flat, he finds that she might be left in a hurry after cleaning the whole flat from her trace. She left no fingerprints to run. She also doesn't have any friends. Hitting a wall, Kim asks help from his old partner, who is still an active police detective. He gets the real Soon Young's previous address from her record file. Kim also borrows his friend's name card so he can pretend to be an active police detective to make the investigation smoother. He then goes to the address and meets the landlord. She says that Soon Young suddenly disappeared and left an apology note with some money to throw away her stuff. The landlord keeps some of the stuff and gives it to Kim. When shown the photo of Moon Ho's fiancé, the landlord doesn't recognize her. He then goes back home. In the box, Kim finds some skincare products and a patient card from a skin clinic. From the clinic, he finds out that the last time she visited the clinic was back in August of 2008 to get treatment for atopic dermatitis. Kim then goes back home to stitch all of the clues he got to build a possible timeline of the truth. On the next day, he tells Moon Ho his investigation result. The real Soon Young disappeared two years ago in March of 2009, and two months later moved to the current address. The one who moved to the current address is not the real Soon Young, but his fiancée who somehow manages to steal Soon Young's identity. She planned to marry him with that identity, so it looks like she wants to live the rest of her life as Soon Young. If the real Soon Young shows up, it will clear things up. The problem is, where is the real Soon Young? What did his fiancé do to the real Soon Young? Kim suggests Moon Ho to stop the search and continue his life, as it appears that his fiancé is a dangerous person. Moon Ho becomes frustrated as he can't accept the truth. At night, he reflects on the situation in his fiancé's flat. The next day, he decided to visit the real Soon Young's hometown address that he got earlier. The house is empty and locked. He asks around the neighborhood, but the townsfolk seem to be wary of him. As he is about to leave, Soon Young's childhood friends confront him as they mistook him as a lone shark hunting Soon Young. Moon Ho snaps like a maniac. After clearing things up, they talk calmly. He asks them if they recognize his fiancé's photo, but they don't. He finds out that Soon Young had a roommate that lived with her for a while. Her name is Hyun Suk. Meanwhile, Kim digs more about the accident that killed Soon Young's mother. The police ruled it an accident as the stair where she fell is slippery, especially in winter. But is it really an accident? Or someone killed her for her life insurance? Kim checks the scene and meets Moon Ho there. Back at his clinic, he tries to contact Hyun Suk, but she doesn't respond, so he leaves a voicemail. His employee finds a hidden photo from the stuff his fiancée left. Kim investigates it but hits another wall. That's when he remembers that Soon Young uses skincare products to treat her skin condition, so he tries to check the skincare product company. As he waits for the HR manager, he looks at the company employee pictures on the wall. He finds Moon Ho's fiancé on the employee photo of 2008. Her real name is Chao. Finally, after a long investigation, he is able to find out her real identity. He then explains the situation to the HR manager and gets just list of clients when she works there. As expected, Soon Young's name is on the list. But unexpectedly, Kim also finds out that she had an early failed marriage. Kim brings the full file record of Cha to Moon Ho and reports all of his findings. 
he still can't believe that his fiance is really lying to him about her identity and was divorced. Moreover, the work record shows that she took a sick leave on the 8th of December of 2008 for four days. If the death of Soon Young's mother is not an accident, Cha has no alibi. Kim then reports this case to his friend, so the police can handle it. Meanwhile, Moon Ho seems like still can't handle the truth. He is finally able to get his fiancé's real identity, but he still has so many questions. Suddenly, he gets a call from his fiancé, Cha. But she doesn't say anything and hangs up the phone. This really frustrates him, so he drinks all night long. In the morning, Kim checks on him. But it seems that Moon Ho still can't get over it. So Kim takes him to meet Cha's ex-husband to get some closure. From him, they are finally able to get the full truth. Cha was raised in a Catholic orphanage because her parents split when she was 15. Her father was a businessman who took a bad loan from a loan shark and disappeared to hide from them. Her mother promised to take her from the orphanage, but she was seen being taken by the loan shark. Not much later, she was found dead. He felt sorry for her, so he asked her to marry him. But then the loan shark starts bothering them too. Every day, Cha prays to God to kill her father so she can be free from the lone shark. In the end, he couldn't handle it, so he divorced her. From what he knows, Cha went to her choir friend after they got divorced. So Kim and Moon Ho go to her to dig deeper. After Cha got divorced, the lone shark took her by force. Later, she shows up at her friend's house in terrible condition. Only God knows what the lone shark did to her. She even gave birth to a daughter, but the baby didn't survive long. They hear enough and go back home. On the way home, Moon Ho decides to put a stop on the investigation, he has found enough. But suddenly, Hyun Suk calls him. From her, they find out how Cha might have stolen Soon Young's identity. She steals her letter and stalks her around. She also tries to be friends with her. After she gets close enough and knows enough information, she kills her and takes away her identity. She chooses a single person without family so no one will notice. Kim reports this once again to his friend, but it's difficult to make a murder case without a body. They then continue their life as they are ready to close the investigation. But soon they realize that Cha will need a new identity. So someone is in danger. They look at Cha's client's list again and find another woman that meets the criteria. They go to meet her, and as expected, she recognizes Cha. The police confirmed it by CCTV footage. Cha and her even plan to go to a magic concert together. The police try to use the chance to catch Cha. They also have found the body of Soon Young, so they have enough reason to arrest her. Kim and the police go undercover, escorting her to the magic show and wait for Cha. Meanwhile, Moon Ho is working at his clinic. Remember Hodu's mom from earlier? His employee is about to babysit her dog because she is about to go on a trip with a new friend. His employee also tells him that recently someone stole Hodu's mom's letter. Sounds familiar? Moon Ho then remembers that Hodu's mom lives in the countryside alone, with no family. Immediately, he rushes to the nearby train station to intercept her. His employee gets confused and calls Kim. After hearing it, he rushes there too. On the train station, Moon Ho manages to get to Hodu's mom before Cha. He then explains the situation to her. She is surprised and moves away from the scene. As she goes down the escalator, he meets Cha. But she tries to avoid her. Feeling something wrong, Cha gets ready for the worst. To her surprise, Moon Ho is already waiting for her upstairs. Finally, he is able to meet her fiancé again. He confronts her about all of her lies and possible murder, which she admits completely. Moon Ho freaks out and hugs her. He still loves her despite her love for him might also be fake, so he let her go. As Moon Ho walks outside, Kim follows Cha inside and tries to catch her. She freaks out and runs away as Kim chases her. Meanwhile, the police are arriving at the scene too. Moon Ho notices it and runs back inside. Cha is cornered at the edge of the rooftop. She stands at the edge as Moon Ho tries to stop her. But she has enough of this twisted life and jumps down. Leaving Moon Ho freaking out at the top. What a twisted life it is. A villain is just a victim whose story hasn't been told. 
What happened to Chao in her past life molds her fate in the future. Can we really blame her for it? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.